I'm gonna show them laying down. I can also show them seated, but these like mats, these little spots are available to you. If you are somebody who's like, you're like, ah, yeah, let me try this laying down. That's what it's there for. If you're like, nah, I'm just gonna watch and I just wanna learn a little bit, that's fine too, okay? So it's really up to what you would like. I also have, um, my treatment table is back over there. So if you don't wanna get on the floor, but you do wanna lay down, that's available to you also. All right. Oh, welcome everybody. I'm so glad to have you all here. Um, perfect. And this is our workshop on resolving sciatica. I am Dr. Julie Gray and everybody signed in with the QR code. So we're all set there. So before we jump into everything that we need to know about sciatica is I want to tell you a little bit about my patient Sal, because I think a lot of his symptoms will resonate a lot with most of you. So Sal came to me, he actually found me here at Versus Fitness, and he was complaining of this like right hip pain with these radiating, tingling, and numbness symptoms going down his leg. He had a past medical history of a dislocated hip in college. He worked with a trainer, he worked with previous physical therapy, chiropractor, self-help videos online. He kind of tried it all and he wasn't getting any results. So then he found me. So on our evaluation, what we found with Sal is that he had a lot of stiffness. He had joint mobility problems in his hip and his lower back, especially as we started kind of investigating the lower back a little bit more. What we found is that we, as we pressed, it was radiating some of those symptoms down his leg. So we knew there was something going on there. He also had poor muscle balance. There were some muscles that were weak, some muscles that were strong, and this led to a lot of bad movement, impaired movement. His squat wasn't quite right. He had painful lunges, painful squats, and he was also having pain and numbness in his leg when he was driving. And he had a two hour commute one way to work. So he was pretty, he was pretty miserable. Um, I created a specific plan for Sal based on what we found. This included some joint mobility work, flexibility work, hands-on techniques, also exercises to help improve his mobility, but then also to help stabilize his spine, his hip, so that he was able to squat, lunge, do all the movements that were necessary to not have that pain, not have the radiating issue and also work on his posture. So that way when he sat in the car, he wasn't having that radiating symptom. Am I blocking this for anybody? You good? Okay. So after a, after a few weeks of working together, um, Sal got back to doing everything that he loved to do. He was back to work, working out here at the gym. He was able to do his two hour commute and without radiating symptoms, traveling down his leg. He was also given a home program so that he knew what to do to help keep the problem gone and not have it return. So I hope that resonates with some of you here um, as far as when we have some lower back pain, some sciatica symptoms, um, that's a lot of what we deal with. So that's Sal's story. And then my story is I'm Dr. Julie Gray. My role today is to help point you in the right direction to resolving your sciatica. I am a doctor of physical therapy. I'm also a board certified orthopedic clinical specialist, and I'm also certified in vestibular therapy, which what that means is that I'm really good at helping people with dizziness, concussions, and headaches. I started as a physical therapist over five years ago, and I started my private practice last year called Piton Physical Therapy. And I teamed up here with Versus Fitness because I love what they're doing. And I really started my private practice because the other previous physical therapy clinic I was at was a traditional setting, people bouncing in, bouncing out. It was, it was like a factory and it was keeping people in pain and it wasn't helping them. And so I really wanted to do things different. I wanted to serve my clients better. I know that they deserve better and I'm really passionate about helping them in the way that physical therapy should be done, which is working with them one-on-one -on -one to address the root problem to their condition, to truly eliminate their pain, not just be masking it and giving them temporary solutions. 
So in my quote unquote like free time is I am working out here. You're here every morning. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here at the group morning class. I wasn't that good this week. Uh, I only came once, but I did have a presentation to prepare for. So I was a little busy. <laughs> but, and then um, also drag my husband, Ryan, here. So that's my husband, Ryan, uh, for all of you who haven't met him. So jumping into sciatica a little bit further. Today we're going to review the causes of sciatica that might be limiting you from your favorite activities, the myths and truths of sciatica, and some things that you can start doing to help resolve your sciatica symptoms. Did I go the wrong way? No, we're good. So we're going to start with the game of true or false. All right. So true or false. Sciatica is pain traveling down any part of my leg. And I want you guys, you're going to shout it out. False. false. Ooh, like 50-50. <laughs> oh, it's a drum roll. It's false! Oh, surprise! Um, so sciatica is not any pain that travels from the back to the lower leg. It's very specific. So it's a little bit of a, like, a tricky question. But sciatica is inflammation of the sciatic nerve. That nerve runs from your lower back to the buttock and down the back of the leg specifically. So if somebody comes to me and is like, I have sciatica, you know, I'm having all this like radiating pain down through my groin and my inner thigh, it's not sciatica. Sciatica has to be that true back of the leg pain. And true sciatica will result in both motor loss or a strength loss and also a sensation loss. So if I go in and I start assessing somebody and I start to notice that as that nerve runs through the back of the leg, they have weakness through those muscles. Hmm, I'm starting to think things. They have sensation loss. They can't quite feel right. I have tingling and numbness down through that pattern. All right, that might be actual true sciatica, which is commonly caused by a disc herniation in the lower back. Okay. Um, other things that can cause sciatic symptoms that would be like a whole three day course. So I'm not gonna go through all the different things that could mimic sciatica, but just to kind of give a little bit of heads up, I know that that's kind of hard to see, but these are muscles, okay? So on that picture, I think I have a laser on this. Ah, yeah. So here you're looking at a muscle, it's called the piriformis muscle. The sciatic nerve runs right through it, under it, or over it. And that red, if you can kind of see it, that red kind of travels into that buttock region and maybe down towards the, the back of the thigh, okay? And that's how the muscle refers pain, okay? Similarly, the picture on the right, it's showing a muscle in the hip called the glute medius muscle. And when that muscle is tight, irritated, maybe weak, it also can cause referred pain. And look at how that, that travels. That goes all the way down the leg, just like sciatica. So some of these muscles can even mimic sciatica symptoms. So really that true sciatica will see a loss of sensation and a loss of strength. If we're not seeing that, then we got to start thinking other things. Maybe it's muscle, maybe it's another nerve that's involved. That's, we got to investigate. Okay. True or false? Sciatica is always caused by hamstring tightness. True or false? Oh. Yeah, very good. I kind of gave it away on the last one. Wouldn't it be false? False. So false. Hamstring tightness can, it, it's, it's not a correlation. It's not a direct correlation. It's not, oh, my hamstrings are tight, so I will have sciatica. Or I have sciatica, so my hamstrings are tight. There's, there's no direct cause and effect. But think of it like this. You guys remember those old telephones that they had the wire that went into the wall? Yeah. I know, I know. Um, so you would need to unravel the cord in order to improve the signal that was coming out, right? So think of the muscles kind of like the cord and the nerve like the signal. We can help that nerve signal by kind of unwinding that cord or helping work on the flexibility of that muscle to help improve its strength, help improve that signal to the body. Does that kind of make sense? So there's no direct cause and effect, but 
nothing happens independently. You know, your hip is connected to your back and everything works together to help you move and function in a way that it should, unless you're having pain or movement problem. True or false? My MRI showed a problem with the disc in my back. Therefore, I will always have a back problem slash sciatica. Oh, false. Right, that's a false. <laughs> that is true. I don't know. Um, da, 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 false. Yes. So, ninety percent of Americans will experience some type of lower back pain issue in their lifetime. Ninety percent will also have a reoccurrence of lower back pain, and. Most lower back pain is not caused by a serious injury or a serious condition. Now, if I had a client come to me and they were saying things like, I have a change in my bowel and bladder function, I've had unexplained weight loss or weight gain, I've had a fever as of late, and there are other things, then I'm like, okay, we should get this looked at. We need, we should get an MRI. You know, there are some red flags there that makes me kind of want to investigate that a little bit further. However, for most people, lower back pain is not caused by a serious injury or serious condition. And evidence also indicates that if we get an MRI too early into our lower back pain episode, it can actually lead to anxiety and depression in regards to our lower back pain symptoms. It leads to fear and then fear avoidance. Well, I have this lower back pain, so I shouldn't do this, or I might hurt myself if I do this. Um, a disc bulge and a disc herniation can actually be normal. So I have people come up to me and they say, oh, I have a disc herniation through 17 lumbar discs, which doesn't exist. But <laughs> then um, it, it can be normal for some people. And evidence indicates that a herniated disc can show up on imaging in about 76% of people without sciatica symptoms. Meaning, you, we take 10 people in the room, nobody is having any radiating pain, no lower back pain, and about seven of them will come up yeah, with, without any evidence of a disc herniation. Of people with lower back pain symptoms, 46% will show no evidence of any issue. So we take 10 people in the room again with lower back pain, four of them will show up with absolutely nothing on their MRI, okay? So an MRI doesn't necessarily indicate that there's pain, doesn't indicate that there's a problem. An MRI is a big picture, I'm sorry, a small picture of like a big problem. It doesn't look at, is the muscle tight? Is there a movement imbalance? Is there an overuse injury? Is there tightness? Is there weakness? Is there a nerve flexibility issue? Um, it doesn't identify those things. It's just a blank image of something that says, hey, these are the facts. This is what you have. I had an MRI at, how old was I? Maybe 19. Um, so I was having some lower back issues, some hip issues, and that, it was before I was in PT school, before I knew anything. Um, so went and got my MRI and I had two disc bulges. The physician never explained to me that that's normal. The physician never told me like, you're gonna be okay, you know? So it was like, oh my gosh, am I gonna hurt myself? Like I avoided exercise. I avoided those things because I was worried about my lower back. So again, having an MRI too early, like that, that's what it did to me and evidence shows that. It causes anxiety and then it causes fear avoidance to movement, okay? So, if it's not my hamstring, it's not my disc, then what the heck is to blame? What's, go what's going on? What could be causing these symptoms for me? So, there are a couple different factors. Um, and these are all just potential ones up here, but potentially trauma. You had a slip, you had a fall, you had a strain, something happened, right? Referred pain, we kind of talked about that earlier. Muscles and nerves can refer in a certain way. Referred pain, somebody, the common example is that somebody's having a heart attack, they might not feel chest pain, but they have referring pain maybe down their arm, into their jaw, into their back, okay? So it's, it's a referred pain. Our muscles, our other muscles, the heart's a muscle, other muscles can refer pain as well. Beliefs about pain, we talked about this. 
Does pain make you anxious? Do you avoid activities because you're afraid of hurting yourself? Um, exercise or load under fatigue. Snow is coming, guys. It's coming, right? So your first 10 minutes into snow shoveling, you're like, I'm good, I got this. What happens after two hours? You're like, oh my gosh, what did I do to myself, right? So how are we training our bodies to prepare for training under that stress, training under that load? Lifting heavy snow for two hours, that's a big task. How are we training for those everyday functional things? Um, tumors and cysts, we talk about this. The big scary things, right? We're identifying some of those red flags. We wanna know, like, hey, is there something going on here? Um, poor movement patterns. Are your hips stiff? And so as you're squatting, you're compensating with your lower back and causing increased stress or strain. Age-related changes, it's gonna happen to all of us. All of us are gonna get arthritis. All of us are gonna have spinal stenosis and spondylolisthesis and all those big fancy words. Age-related changes. We wanna be moving. We wanna keep our bodies active. Motion is lotion. The best thing that we can do for our joints, for our muscles, is exercise, right? Motion is lotion. Oh yeah, it's on the I got all the little corny things. Um, and, and repetitive stress. Okay, I'm gonna call Ryan out on this one. Um, my lovely husband is a UPS driver. He walks a whole heck of a lot and squats a whole heck of a lot, right? So he's training a lot of these front muscles, walking, squatting, it's good stuff, right? But he's doing that hundreds of times a day over eight years he's been at UPS. So how are we training the surrounding muscles in those groups in order to stabilize his spine to be able to tolerate working under that kind of stress and that kind of load? So what the heck can I do, Julie? You're telling me all these things. So what, what's the solution? What can I do? So we want to rule out any serious condition, right? If you're having change in bowel and bladder, you're having unexplained, unexplained. If you're like, I'm dieting and I lost 10 pounds, that's explained, okay? And weight gain, oh, it's the holidays. And yeah, that's also explained. Um, like I said, motion is lotion. We want to stay active. We want to stay moving. You sit for an hour, get up, walk around for a minute, two minutes. Evidence shows that that helps reduce lower back stiffness. Graded gradual loading. How you are training your body outside of activity. So a snow shoveling example, right? We wanna make sure that our bodies are ready in order to tolerate those big heavy loads that we might need to do during our day in our life. A proper warm up. Before you go snow shoveling, are you doing a warm up? Right. <laughs> right, who thought about that? But you're about to do this big physical activity, right? You're about to do yard work, okay? Are you doing a warm up before you do yard work? Are you stretching? Are you working on your flexibility? No, who does that, right? Who thinks about that? Oh, I'm telling you right now, so now you think about it, right? Even five, 10 minutes, just get the muscles ready to embrace movement. I'm doing yard work, I'm gonna be squatting, I'm gonna be moving, I'm gonna be lunging, I'm gonna pick things up, move things down. If I'm starting out stiff, right? That's not going to do any favors to my lower back, right? Um, train under the conditions that you need. Go back to our snow shoveling example, right? So again, I might be able to tolerate 10 minutes. How am I going to do after two hours? So am I training my body when it's tired? Am, how does my body look once I'm tired? Oh, I do good. You know, the first 10 minutes of my workout, I feel really good. But then after that, you know, oh, my hips start to get tired. I start to compensate with my lower back. So now I'm two hours into snow shoveling and the next three days I'm out for the count because I'm so sore, <laughs> right? And proper body mechanics. Um, and that's, you know, that is going to be individualized towards each person because how I squat, how Diana squats and how Ryan squats are all totally different. And that doesn't make me right and Diana wrong. It just means that we might have some different anatomical things that makes one position more ideal for me versus Diana. So the goal of mobility is we want to maintain or improve ranges of motion that all humans should have. So should the back be mobile or should it be stiff? It should be both, right? Our idea is that we want the spine to be able to move in all the ways that you need it to move for your functional tasks for the things that you do every day, whether you're deadlifting or you're pulling weeds in your yard, 
we want the spine to be mobile and ready to have that type of mobility for the tasks that we need and also be stable to tolerate those activities, to tolerate repetitive bending, repetitive squatting, those kind of things. Um, we generally, when we lift and when we squat, when we pick things up off the floor, you know, when we're going from sitting to standing even if you want to get there, but when we're moving, we generally want to favor a neutral spine. And we're going to go through what that means and I'm going to show you how to kind of find your neutral spine in a second. So when we're lifting, we generally favor that position, but that's not always right in every single circumstance. It depends, but in general, we want to favor that neutral spine posture to protect our spine, protect our bodies, so that when we go to lift something heavy, like a case of water bottle or you know a barbell, we want to make sure that our core and our lower back is ready to embrace that movement. So if during some of these things that we review, you might feel some discomfort, that might indicate some type of issue with the lower back or some type of sciatic nerve irritation, and you're going to want to see me and talk to me more at the end of today. Um, but keep in mind, everybody is responsible for their own cells. So don't, if you came in with a little cranky grumpiness, don't make it cranky grumpy or Okay, um, everybody is responsible for themselves and I'm here like you need to talk to me afterwards if you're noticing anything, okay? So first, actually you're not going to stand up, sorry, but <laughs> you will in a second. So we're going to review first is how to find that like neutral spine posture and I really like this one. I'm going to use it for example for lifting, um, but it's also where you want to be if you're sitting you sit at a computer desk and you work all day um you know though you sit in the car to drive we want to be favoring that neutral spine posture so if you're laying down or sitting on the floor you're gonna lay down with your knees bent if you can and want to it's what i would recommend and if you're seated you could stay seated or you can lay down whatever your preference is and i'm going to talk you through kind of how to find that neutral spine posture and then we're going to like stand up and Try to find it again all right so everyone can kind of rest their hands on uh, even the people seated you're gonna kind of rest your hands we call it the pelvis like the kind of the bony part in the front of your hips okay you can kind of hold those together perfect Chris are gonna lay flat I'm sorry you won't be able to do it if you're like that you'll hate me you'll get very tight so uh, I'm gonna talk you through it you don't need to really watch me and I'm gonna come around and make sure you know everybody's kind of got this so Everybody should kind of feel that they have a little space between the floor and like where their lower back is. There's like a little space, or if you're seated, there's like a little space between maybe you and the back of the chair, right? So what I want everybody to do is you are going to roll your hips, flatten your back, tighten your tummy. So your core is gonna get tight and your back has become flat, okay? How are we doing? Anybody having an issue? That is perfect, beautiful, perfect. Perfect. You know those. How you doing? <laughs> you taught me well. Good. Okay. Good. Good. All right. So now everybody's gonna go the other way, and you're going to arch your lower back. Just the power, and you know, don't need to go crazy. But almost like you're sticking, sticking your tushy out. If you're laying on the floor, you're gonna increase that space between your lower back and the mat. Okay. Now, everyone, you doing okay, Lori? <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> I, the first time I learned this was in PT school and I was like, um, I'm sorry, like what I'm, I'm doing what with what? Like I'm moving my pelvis that moves that way. Um, so this takes practice. So don't feel like, what the heck is she saying? It takes practice. So don't stress. So now you're going to find the middle of those two ranges. Okay. So you can kind of flatten your back, tighten your tummy, eliminate the space, arch your back, create more space and find the middle of those two ranges of motion, all right? That is your neutral spine, okay? That might look different for me versus Sheila versus Tom. That might look different for all of us, but that's your quote unquote neutral spine posture, all right? So now everybody is going to stand up. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I think it's fine. <laughs> And then you're going to hate me because then you're all going to sit back down. Again. Sorry. All right. So now everybody's, now it will be harder to, to find your neutral spine posture. 
standing compared to especially laying down or seated because now the muscles like are all going to be tighter because now they're working to help me keep upright so if you're like man this is so much harder what the heck it's fine practice okay so everyone's going to place their hands on their hips just like they were okay that little bony prominence on the front of your hips right and you are going to tighten your tummy flatten your back arch very good diana Diana's got this. That's why she's in the front of the class. I have low back pain, so <laughs> she, I've been she through knows. this. She knows. She's been through it, right? And then you're all going to do the opposite. Again, hip tolerance. You're going to arch your back, almost like you're sticking your tissue out. Okay? It's good. And then, yeah, similar to that. And then you're going to find the middle of those two ranges for you. Okay? So you're like, not the extreme one way, not the extreme the other, the middle. Okay? That is your neutral spine posture. So you're standing and you're washing your dishes neutral spine posture. Am I like this and I'm like relying on all my ligaments in order to support me? Yeah, I'm gonna have lower back pain by the time I'm done doing the dishes. It's gonna hurt, all right? Or as I'm doing a deadlift, right? I see my lovely husband, he's like, what, what am I doing here? Um, you see the gears turning, right? So, um, and it gets, it, gets, it gets better with practice, right? But again, so if you're doing it seated, right? You, you work at an office, you need to sit all day long. How are you sitting, are you sitting really arched thinking that that's you know like your good posture position like oh i'm not tall right yeah or the opposite you know like this so it can help we want the muscles to be able to do that job to support you all day long and to do that the muscles need endurance but to help them out you can always use a little towel or a pillow behind your chair just into okay find my neutral spine posture here it is little pillow there little dish towel and there we go. Now it's giving me a cue to not roll or to not arch. Okay, so that's a little tip. So now that everybody's standing, does anybody have questions about any of that? Good. So keep that in mind as you're doing some of the things here, if you work out here or in your daily tasks, wherever, think about that neutral spine posture. Okay, that will help. Now, everybody to their tolerance, you are going to keep your knees straight and you're going to try to touch your toes. Okay, very good. You might notice some little grumpy tightness in the back of your hamstrings. Okay, we want to know is that hamstring tightness or sciatic nerve tightness? Oh, we don't know. Everybody come up. Good. So now for the people who are seated, you can go back to being seated. For the people who were laying on the floor, you're going to go back to laying on the floor. Um, but the people who are on the floor, I want you kind of in like this position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So I'm going to show the people who are laying down first, and then I'll tell you how to modify this for being seated. Okay, either one is fine. So now what you're going to do is you're going to lean forward and like give yourself like a little hamstring stretch like you would traditionally. Yeah. So, and then carefully, gently, you're going to flex your toes and your ankles up towards Ow. you. Yes. <laughs> okay, so then you can relax. Don't hold that position for too long, especially if you're an owie. So if you're an owie with that, you might have some sciatic nerve tightness, and then you should see me later. All right? So, yeah. Um, for the people who are seated, um, very similar. Okay, You're going to kind of do, Tom, you're doing it perfect. But at the edge of your chair, you're going to kind of slump forward, and then go to your tolerance, and then flex your toes up towards you, and you might feel that little subtle pull. Okay? If you're feeling that pull, that's a good indication that you got some sciatic nerve grumpiness, okay? So now I'm going to teach you a technique to help get it going, move it around. So muscles like to be stretched. The hamstring likes to be stretched. Hamstring, for those of you who don't know, big muscle in the back of the leg, okay? Sciatic nerve runs through it, okay? Now, when we're stretching, 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 stretching our hamstring, Hamstring might like it, your sciatic nerve does not like it. Nerves are very finicky, they're very grumpy, they're like an irritable toddler. So we want to be nice to them. Instead of stretching, like holding a stretch for 10, 15, 30 seconds, right? Nerves, alternatively, they like to be what we call this is glide or flossed. Move a little, relax a little, move a little, relax a little, okay? So I'm gonna teach you all how to do that. Um, if you are on the ground, I'm going to have you lay back, like lay flat entirely. 
Um, let me talk through how to do this laying down and then I'll kind of talk you through how to do it seated. Um, and again, if you want to lay down, there's mat there. There's also my treatment table. So if somebody can grab that, it's all clean, ready to go. Um, whoever wants to lay down there. So um, depending if you have some lower back grumpiness, you can bend your knees or you can keep them straight. Okay, whatever is most comfortable for you. Okay. You are going to grab, use both hands, grab behind one thigh. Very good, very good, very good. Grab behind oh, the leg. Okay. There you go. I didn't realize it was that. Obvious, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is it really that easy? I don't think everybody else. Yeah. Don't Once one person had it, I knew everybody else would get it. Um, so now you're going to gently straighten your knee, just, just enough to feel a very, very subtle pull, nothing too intense. And then you're going to flex your foot towards your face and down, almost like a pump. Yeah, and that's the perfect way to do it seated. So you guys picked that up very well. Good. Good. and you just pump up and down. Maybe do between 10 and 15. Okay, you should feel a subtle stretch. If you're far starting to feel tingling or numbness, even like heat or cold, anything going down into the foot, you're probably stretching it a little bit too intensely, in which I would recommend bend your knee a little bit more. Okay, you wanna feel that just like nice subtle, nice subtle stretch, nothing crazy. And then when you finish about 10 to 15 on one side, switch, try to do the other side. Take note, how did it feel when you started your first one or two versus when you finished up with, you know, for the stretch. your 10 to 15. Mm -hmm. How's everybody doing? Surviving? Breathing? Quiet. <laughs> Everyone's concentrating. I love this stretch. Oh, it's a good one. It's a fan favorite. This is a really good, it's like, this is a really good, like, warm-up exercise to, like, again, working out, right? but also in your daily tasks, okay? You're about to go for a long walk. It's a really good one, okay? And this is helping, again, we stretch, stretch, stretch. You might find that, like, I have chronically tight hamstrings. Probably not. You probably have sciatic nerve flexibility problem. And so you're stretching, cranking on that hamstring all the time, trying to stretch it, but really you're just irritating that nerve more, making those muscles get tighter, making that nerve grumpier. And it's like a constant problem. So even for some of my, again, it depends. Everybody's different, everybody is individual. So I might tell somebody like, hey, you know, hold off on stretching your hamstrings and just do this as an alternative. You're gonna kill two birds, one stone. It's gonna stretch your hamstring and it's gonna keep the nerve happy, okay? Mm -hmm. So now everybody who is laying down, you're gonna go back to that seated position with the legs out in front of you. Okay. And you're going to do the same thing that you just did before, but you do that little gentle lean and bring the toes up. Can you go a little further? Does it feel a little less grumpy? Um, <laughs> any, any change? It, and also like, I mean, you did it for like maybe what, 30 seconds. So it might need a little time if it's been constantly tight, but if you stand up, See, maybe you can reach a little further before you feel that hamstring pull, that hamstring stretch. Everybody stand up. <laughs> Ooh, I can touch my toes now. See? That's so good. <laughs> good job. Yeah. 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 So, and all you did, you didn't stretch your hamstring. You, we call it glide or floss. You flossed that sciatic nerve. Right, so you might be constantly stretching your hamstrings, like man, they're so tight. Mm. You need to see me. You got some sciatic nerve tightness. Okay, we want to get that resolved for you before it turns into something more serious. Or if you're having lower back pain, mm, might be contributing. Yeah. All right. Um, so now everybody can go back to the position that they are in the most comfortable place, whether that's seated, like on the floor, wherever. Be comfortable. Good. Anybody have any questions about those two things? We reviewed our neutral spine posture, okay, and the importance of that. And we reviewed sciatic nerve glide slash floss in order to work on the mobility. Anybody have questions with either of those two? Yes. So I know actually when I was doing the, um, the seated position, I was pulling my feet towards myself. I felt it in one side more than the other. Is that is that something I do throughout my day where I'm compensating more on one side? 
that would lead to more static time on one side? Ooh, very good question. Probably. I don't know. I need to look past you. I don't know. Um, yeah, is there a compensation that's going on? Maybe there is a weakness on one side, so it's more compensated on the other side. You know, um, we nobody is totally symmetrical. You know, everyone's got one hand, like one arm that's longer than the other, one hip that's higher. You know, all of those things. But when we start to notice those things are causing us a problem, like. Ooh, I feel like really strong tightness on one side, or maybe I'm having pain out in one leg, or I always have this knee pain in this right side. It's always my right side that's the problem. Hmm, there's some type of muscle imbalance. Maybe you're really stiff on your left side and you're constantly compensating on the right. So hard to tell, I would say probably, but I'm not sure. It's a politically correct answer. Um, I love teachers. So, at Peton PT, we have a three-step method to helping people return back to all the activities that they love. We first, we prepare. We prepare the body for movement. This is giving you education about your condition, what it is that's going on, and start addressing some of the flexibility problems, your joint mobility problems, and we're getting your body ready for phase two, which is where we are stabilizing the body. We're working on your strength and conditioning. We are improving your tolerance to your exercise tasks, your daily activities, your working out, all of those things. So we work on your flexibility and mobility, but then if that's all you do, all you do is go for a massage, right? It's like, oh, it feels so good in the moment. Oh, thank you. But then in two days, the pain comes back, right? And that's what traditional physical therapy I'll say traditional because I'm not traditional. Traditional physical therapy, chiropractic, massage, they're gonna keep you in pain because you're never getting that re-education component to not only your body and how it's moving, but also to those muscles. Those muscles are used to being tight. Your nerves are used to being tight. They've been that way X, Y, Z amount of time, right? So we need to work on the flexibility and mobility retrain the muscles on how to move and how to be at their optimal self. Then in our last phase is our, is our perform phase. And this is where we're testing your body's capacity, not only to be able to tolerate, you know, being able to drive a car for two hours, but also how are you gonna tolerate shoveling snow for two hours, right? How is your body going to handle those extreme challenges? We wanna challenge that body's capacity and that is through graded loaded exposure, really pushing that strength. So in summary, we reviewed some of the myths and truths to sciatica. We went through what it is and some things that you guys can start doing to help resolving some of the symptoms starting today. As a courtesy for everybody who attended the workshop, we're offering our, our total body assessment and the QR code is gonna be on the door on your way out, also kind of floating around. You could try to scan it on there. Sometimes it acts a little grumpy for me earlier. Um, and this is where we really start investigating, hey, where's the problem coming from? We're looking not only at your lower back, if you're having a lower back issue, but we need to look at you as a global person. You're not just like your lower back pain, right? You are a full functioning human. How are you moving, right? That's the most important thing. Also the cell phone number that's up there, also my cards floating around and follow me in the email or that you'll get, you'll have my phone number. That's my cell phone. Text me, call me. I'd love to talk to you. Love to get to know what's going on with you. I'm gonna be here at the end. Anybody who wants to chit chat, I'm more than happy to, to talk and, and bounce ideas off of you and go from there, all right? Thank you to Gio and Corianne for hosting me. And thank you all for coming today. I really appreciate it. And I hope you got a lot out of this and that you can start implementing some of the things that we talked about. Thank you.